Heavy rains overnight leave several roads in St. Anne, St. Mary and Portland impossible. Fitz Jackson writes to leader of government business in the House of Representatives Edmund Bartlett requesting that Banking Services Amendment Act 2020 be placed on today's agenda and approved. Two illegal firearms seized following alleged confrontation between the Kingston East Police and criminals and WHO tracking four sublineages of the Omicron COVID-19 variant. Heavy rains overnight have left several roads in St. Anne, St. Mary and Portland impassable. The National Works Agency, NWA, says flooding was reported along the Runaway Bay Crossroad in St. Anne and the Siemens Valley um, in the Rio Cobra Valley, Portland. And that's Rio Grande Valley in Portland. In St. Mary, rivers are in spade and have overflowed on the roads in Drasiki and Jacks River. NWA communication manager Stephen Shaw says the water is receding in Runaway Bay. Receded in respect of the main road along the North Coast Highway through Runaway Bay. We are now in the process of cleaning up that particular bit of road. Traffic is once again moving along this corridor. The situation in St. Mary is that we are with the floodwaters to, to recede as well for the roads to become impassable. Similarly, in the Rio Grande Valley in Portland, except for a fallen tree that we have along the road from Windsor Castle to Moortown, the impact really has been flooding in these areas. NWA communication manager Stephen Shaw. In the meantime, Mayor of Port Maria Richard Query lamented the millions of dollars in losses for business operators in the town center after their establishments were flooded during the heavy rains. Mr. Query, along with residents, stood in knee and some areas waste high water surveying the damage this morning. Well, we are in the town center of Port Maria, as you can see, all the business places from probably the primary school all the way um, around to Main Street and Warner Street are underwater as we speak, so it is millions of dollars worth of damage. Every time this happens, my heart goes out to those business persons who would have lost millions of dollars. Um, so it is a serious uh, effect on the economy of Port Maria and of St. Mary, and the recovery process is going to be a long one. Mr. Query says the drainage plan for the town should be fast-tracked. You cannot continue to allow persons to lose millions of dollars in flooding every time it happens. So I will be definitely lobbying for that drainage plan. It has to be funded, it has to be done, because we can't continue having Port Maria like this whenever rain falls. Mayor of Port Maria, Richard Query. Mr. Query told Radio Jamaica News that the flooding was widespread to include areas in Islington and Rocca Besso. And heavy rains that uh, pounded Haiti for more than a day caused widespread flooding that forced nearly 2,500 families to seek a temporary shelter. Officials say the cold front that arrived Sunday hit Haiti's northern and southern regions the hardest, bringing fierce winds that uprooted trees in some communities. The country's civil protection agency said the weather system destroyed at least three houses and flooded more than 2,570 homes, many of them in a region still trying to recover from a deadly 7.2 magnitude earthquake that hit in August. A power plant was also flooded and caused a bridge to collapse, leaving one community isolated. In one town, people waded through waist-deep water as they tried to rescue a motorcycle and other belongings. Some families grabbed each other by the hand as they battled flowing flood waters while balancing large bags of clothes and other items on their heads. Member of Parliament for St. Catherine South, Fitz Jackson, has written to leader of government business in the House of Representatives, Edmund Bartlett, requesting that the Banking Services Amendment Act 2020 be placed on today's agenda and approved. Mr. Jackson told Radio Jamaica News that he has recommended that debate begin on the bill this afternoon. There have been diverging views on whether the government should seek to regulate banks following the fee hike announced by National Commercial Bank and Scotiabank. Professor of International Business at the University of the West Indies, Denzel Williams, says banks should do a detailed analysis of their customer base so that they charge affordable fees. On the other hand, he said customers should bear in mind that banks incur significant operational costs. 
Two illegal firearms are seized following an alleged confrontation with the Kingston East Police and criminals last night. The men escaped. An AK-47 rifle with 29 rounds and a Glock pistol with an extended magazine containing 12 rounds were seized. The police reported that they encountered armed men in Bulby about 11.15. The men allegedly fired on the police who responded. The men fled, leaving the weapons. The Kingston East Police Division has seized 13 illegal firearms since the start of the year. The four men who were held on the weekend following a reported shootout at the police in Newmarket, St. Elizabeth, have been charged with wounding, rather, they've been charged with shooting and illegal possession of a firearm and ammunition. Their identities are being withheld as other police divisions have an interest in them. The four men were accosted when the police responded to reports of suspicious looking individuals in Newmarket. A man was fatally a shot by the police during the confrontation. World Health Organization WHO Director General Dr. Tedros Ghebreyesus today disclosed that the agency is tracking four sub lineages or lineages of the Omicron COVID-19 variant of concern, including BA2. Researchers for a Danish study yesterday reported that the BA2 subvariant of Omicron, which has quickly taken over in Denmark, is more transmissible than the original BA1 variant and more able to infect vaccinated people, addressing a media brief today. Dr. Tedros has said the agency was concerned that a narrative has taken hold in some countries that because of vaccines and Omicron's low severity, preventing transmission is no longer necessary. This virus will continue to evolve, which is why we call on countries to continue testing, surveillance and sequencing. We can't fight this virus if we don't know what it's doing. And we must continue to work to ensure all people have access to vaccines. At the same time, it's also clear that as this virus evolves, so vaccines may need to evolve. World Health Organization Director General Dr. Tedros Ghebreyesus, since Omicron was first identified just 10 weeks ago, almost 90 million cases have been reported to the WHO, more than were reported in the whole of 2020. The WHO said it is starting to see a worrying increase in deaths in most regions of the world. Sunday marked two years since the WHO declared a public health emergency of international concern over the spread of COVID-19. In the meantime, the World Health Organization is warning governments against lifting COVID-19 restrictions too early. WHO Emergencies Program Head Dr. Mike Ryan says leaders should not bow to public and political pressure but look at their situations before making a decision. Responding to a question at a media briefing today, Dr. Ryan said while he understands the frustration around the world, restrictions are necessary to save lives. We need to tell our, our, our populations that we're doing it for this reason because we have taken these other measures. My, my greatest fear at the moment, to be quite honest, Simon, is that countries have a lemming syndrome now and they all chase to open up. And they open up on the basis that the country next door opened up. And the problem is they don't have the same situation. They don't have the same vaccine coverage. They don't have a strong health system. And, and I'm really fearful that while some countries have the opportunity to raise measures uh, more than others, others may choose that because there is political pressure to do that. Um, and that political pressure will result in people in some countries opening prematurely and that will result in unnecessary transmission, unnecessary severe disease and unnecessary death. WHO Emergencies Program Head Dr. Mike Ryan. And Jamaica's COVID-19 positivity rate has declined to 16.1%. 294 cases were confirmed from 2,106 samples yesterday. COVID-19 claimed five more lives. The death toll is now 2,663. The latest deaths occurred in Clarendon, St. Anne, St. Mary, St. Catherine and Kingston. 